Hello, my friends, and let's start by saying that responses to the Russian territory are still ongoing. Yesterday evening, new widows of the work of the Air Forces appeared in Belgorod. The governor reported that nine aerial targets have been shot down and, in turn, the Russians have resumed shelling Kharkiv. The Russian armed forces struck Kharkiv with S-300 missiles. An educational institution has been damaged. Currently, there is no information about casualties. According to the latest intelligence, it is known that the Russians plan to continue the mass shelling, and on the 3rd, which is today, there may be attacks. Experts are uh, stating that such shelling could become more frequent. Since the pause was long, the Russians managed to accumulate a large number of missiles. Additionally, they have increased production to 100 missiles per month. Zaluzhny also stated, Today, the Air Force of the Armed Forces of Ukraine downed 10 out of 10 Russia, Kinshul, KH-47 M2 aeroballistic missiles with the help of the Patriot AD system. This is a record. If the missiles hit their targets, the consequences would be catastrophic. As you understand it, the Russians may be targeting decision-making centers. Therefore, the majority of missiles are directed at Kyiv to cripple Ukraine. Now let's immediately turn to the situation on the front line, starting with the Kherson direction. Here, yeah, the occupiers are increasing their offensive actions on all three fronts. Uh, however, there is one problem. The armed forces of Ukraine are successfully repelling them, and even counterattacks are pushing them back from some positions. We are still waiting to see if they can consolidate, but it's evident that success is on the side of the armed forces of Ukraine. The occupiers are shocked by the number of losses. They are already withdrawing artillery away from the river, so there will likely be more good news from this direction soon. Meanwhile, uh, shelling of the right bank continues and the occupiers have struck Snihurivka. They are attempting to hit the rear to impact the armed forces of Ukraine depots. The Russians described the situation on the left bank as follows. According to the situation in the evening of February 1, 24, in the area of Krenki. No change. Counter-rifle battles continue, supported only by mortar fire. The only thing worth noting today is the arrival of the FSB Commission at the 70th Motorized Rifle Division. The Commission is authorized to conduct an inspection of the sharp increase in cases of alcohol abuse by servicemen of the 70th Motorized Rifle Regiment over the past two months. Probably, the decision to send the FSB Commission to the 70th Motorized Rifle Regiment was due to an incident on New Year's Eve, when a soldier of the 28th Motorized Rifle Regiment of the 70th Motorized Rifle Regiment in a state of alcoholic intoxication shot a local resident of the village of Alyashki and wounded a colleague. Yes, this is the bitter truth. You won't read it on other channels. As it appears, the situation remains unchanged for the Russians. At the same time, yesterday evening, information began to emerge about new explosions in Crimea. After two powerful explosions, two columns of smoke rise over Sevastopol. Overall, the destruction of the occupiers continues. In the Zaporizhia direction, the occupiers have increased the number of shelling along the front line and continue assaults on the village of Robotine. Although the general staff reported that the Russians conducted 
one attack within a day. It was unsuccessful. As it seems, there are no successes and the front line remains unchanged. The Ukrainian armed forces also continue to strike at the rear. And yesterday evening there were reports of explosions in Takmak. So we are waiting for details. In the Vuglidar direction, the occupiers continue shelling, but the number has decreased. At the same time, there are no new offensive actions and the front line remains unchanged. In the Avdivka direction, the occupiers are aggressively storming the positions of the Ukrainian armed forces with increased intensity. Unfortunately, they have achieved some success. There were 18 attacks within a day. They managed to break into the village of Berdichi and battles are reported to be ongoing there. Whether they can consolidate remains to be seen in the near future. But the situation is very difficult. Battles are also ongoing in the Novobakhmutivka area. And the Ukrainian armed forces prevented them from consolidating near the village. Therefore, today the direction of attacks has changed. Additionally, for several consecutive days, the occupiers attempted to advance in the area of Ocheretene. Some maps depict uh, alleged advancements, but these are in reality fake. Any progress is at most in the gray zone. Battles in the Coke and Chemical Plant and on the fields near the northern outskirts of Avdiivka continue, but the occupiers still fail to change the front line and all attacks are repelled. In the industrial zone, the occupiers are trying to break through to the city over the railway. Battles also persist on the eastern side of Avdiivka, but here too the front line remains unchanged with the Ukrainian armed forces repelling all attacks. In the Bakhmut direction, as expected, the lull in Bogdanivka was short-lived and the occupiers resumed their offensive actions. Shelling of the Ukrainian armed forces positions continue in the direction of Chasidyar. To the south, Difficult battles continue in the Klishivka and Andreevka areas. There is a significant number of shelling reported here, but there are no changes along the front line, and the Ukrainian armed forces continue to repel Russian attacks. Within a day, the occupiers conducted five attacks, and while the intensity is not the highest, offensive actions persist. In the Sivir's direction, the Russians continue shelling, but no new attacks are reported and the front line remains unchanged. Shelling is reported in the Krumina area near Torske and Nevske. However, there is no significant activity along the front line and no offensive actions are being carried out. In the direction of Svat, the occupiers shelled Berestova, but there is no notable activity along the front line and the situation remains unchanged. In the Kupensk direction, battles for Sinkivka continue and attacks are reported in the area near the highway. There were five attacks within a day. The occupiers use both equipment and manpower, but they don't achieve success, and the front line remains unchanged. In the Petropavlivka and Ivanovsky areas, only shelling is reported. So, to achieve any successes, the Russians actively continue to increase the production of weapons. In this endeavor, they are greatly assisted by China.
China has increased the supply of machine tools for Russia's military industry by 10 times according to the Financial Times, if in February 2022 China accounted for 12% of Russian imports of such machines, $6.5 million, then in July 2023 it was already 57%, $68 million. According to Alexander Gabov, director of the Carnegie Berlin Center for Russian and Eurasian Studies, previous U.S. sanctions and export restrictions on Chinese military contractors have led to the fact that many Chinese companies simply ignore the potential risks of U.S. sanctions. And that's all for me. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye-bye.